Nah, if it isn't the old cookout on the college green. In this sketch, we'll see the students of Sketchy U prepare some proteinaceous, amino acid-filled meats while we cover how alpha amino acids are prepared in the lab. But before we chomp into all the juicy details, let's have a quick refresher on the structure of alpha amino acids. These molecules consist of a central alpha carbon, which is almost always chiral. Glycine is the exception, but don't worry about that for now. Anyways, the alpha carbon is bonded to a hydrogen, a carboxyl group, an amino group, and an R group. That's the side chain that determines the amino acid's identity. When scientists want to make these molecules in the lab, there are two main methods they use, the Strecker synthesis and the Gabriel synthesis. Thankfully, you don't need to worry about memorizing every single bond that breaks and forms during these processes. Instead, just focus on the overall idea of each synthesis. We'll start with the Strecker synthesis, which we've symbolized with this Stryker brand grill. This synthesis is a bit simpler and more elegant than the Gabriel process, which is why the Stryker grill is simple but sleek. This process starts with an aldehyde and ammonia reacting. So Al's hiding behind the grill with a bottle of ammonia cleaner. Stealth cleaning wouldn't be my first choice for extracurricular fun, but to each their own. Anyways, the ammonia in this first step usually comes from ammonium chloride salt. Then on the aldehyde, the identity of the R group determines the side chain of the amino acid and therefore which amino acid is ultimately made. Okay, so maybe Al needs a little more practice at stealth cleaning. Always look before you spray, kids. All the same, Al attacking himself with ammonia should help you remember that in the first step of the Strecker synthesis, ammonia attacks the aldehyde's carbonyl carbon to create an imine. See that I mind the grill apron on the guy next to Al? He may be weirdly possessive of his hot dog flipping responsibilities, but he's also a nice reminder of imines. Next, the guy who mines the grill is being attacked by a cyan bird because once an imine forms, its central carbon is attacked again, this time by cyanide, which is present in the reaction solution as either potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. This cyanide attack creates an alpha amino nitrile, but don't sweat remembering that name. The important thing is that this molecule consists of a chiral carbon atom bound to the amino group from the ammonia attack, the new cyano, or CN group, a hydrogen, and the initial aldehyde's R group. That means this intermediate actually already resembles an amino acid, except there's a cyano group where we need a carboxyl. So in the last step of the Strecker synthesis, that alpha amino nitrile is hydrolyzed, which ultimately leads the nitrogen of the cyano group to be replaced by two oxygens and a hydrogen, forming a carboxyl group. And to represent that this hydrolysis creates a carboxyl group, we've placed a student with a cardboard box just to the right of some spilled water. So with that, you've got a freshly synthesized amino acid, just like these extra fresh meats that definitely weren't scavenged from the back of the communal dorm fridge. Well, I see why no one's using Gabe's grill. What a clunker. And fittingly, the Gabriel synthesis is a clunkier, more complicated way to make amino acids. See, the Gabriel synthesis even starts out with a big cumbersome molecule. Potassium thalamide. So we've depicted potassium thalamide with a two-ringed watermelon with a potassium-filled banana on top. When you're 20, nothing says legendary rager like an epic fruit arrangement. Now, don't worry too much about remembering the name potassium thalamide. The important point is just that we're starting off with a big ol' molecule. All right, the first thing that happens in the Gabriel synthesis is that potassium thalamide undergoes an SN2 reaction with diethyl bromomalinate. This results in the potassium on the ring structure being swapped out for a chunky substituent that contains two esters coming off a central carbon. That's why on this next fruit arrangement, the banana has been replaced by a chunkier addition that includes two big grape bunches to represent the two esters. Also, see that lemon with the plus sign stem? That's a reminder that the hydrogen bonded to the central carbon atom is quite acidic because of resonance stabilization from the esters. And that's important because the next thing that happens is that a base deprotonates that carbon, removing the acidic hydrogen. Now the stage is set for yet another SN2 reaction, this time with a bromoalkane, aka a bromine bound to an R group. This results in an R group being swapped in where the acidic hydrogen was. Hence how the next fruit arrangement has some R-shaped raspberries in place of the lemon. And once again, it's the structure of this R group that determines the side chain of the amino acid, and thus the amino acid's identity. 
Well, I hope these kids are more careful with their beers than they are with their water. Alas, yet another spilled water bottle lets us know that we've got another hydrolysis reaction on our hands. In this one, with the help of heat and a strong base, the ring structure and both esters are broken apart to form a carboxylic acid containing two carboxyl groups and one amino group. So to symbolize the carboxylic acid leaving the ring structure, we've separated a fruit skewer from the ring-like watermelon and placed it on a plate. Plus, the grape bunches are smaller this time to remind you that the esters become carboxyl groups, which are also smaller. And also, there's two cardboard boxes down below to help you remember that these are two carboxyl groups. And finally, we've placed a proteinaceous sausage link on the plate to serve as a reminder of the amino group. Gotta love the good old sausage-grape combo. Okay, at this point, we've got a molecule that almost resembles an amino acid. But we need one of those carboxyl groups to magically turn into a hydrogen. Well, poof! Just like magic, the final step in the Gabriel synthesis is a decarboxylation. Which you can remember by this smushed cardboard box that's been, well, deboxed. So, on the plate above this box, one of the small grape bunches has been replaced by a plus-shaped toothpick as a reminder that one of the carboxyl groups is replaced by a hydrogen during this decarboxylation. Like any decarboxylation, this all happens with the help of heat. And now we've got a proper amino acid, which means we finally made it to the end of the Gabriel synthesis. Again, don't sweat all the little details here. The most important thing is that you understand that this process starts with a large molecule that then undergoes a series of substitutions and decarboxylation to become one of the amino acids we all know and love. Now, the last thing to remember about both the Strucker and Gabriel synthesis is that they are not stereospecific. That means they'll create a racemic mixture of L and D amino acids. And that explains this punch mixture filled with L and D ice cubes. You know, I was suspicious about the lack of booze at this party, and for once, I can't fault the kids. They're gonna need the alcohol in their stomach to kill whatever was growing on last semester's pork chops. All right, the Strecker synthesis is simple and sleek. It starts with an aldehyde condensation where ammonia and cyanide attack the aldehyde's alpha carbon. Then, the resulting amino nitrile is hydrolyzed, which causes the cyano group to be replaced by a carboxyl group, creating an amino acid. The Gabriel synthesis is a little less, uh, to the point. It starts with a double-ringed potassium thalamide molecule, which undergoes two substitutions and a deprotonation to form a structure with the future amino acids alpha carbon bonded to a two-ringed constituent, two esters, and an R group. Then, the structure is hydrolyzed and decarboxylated, which removes the ring, breaks the esters into carboxyls, then replaces one carboxyl group with a hydrogen. Only then do you have an amino acid. Okay, as much as I love angry birds, moldy meat, ammonia in my eyes, and complicated biomolecule syntheses, I think the faster we end this one, the better. See you next time!